Welcome, Zaslow Show 2.0. It is a Tuesday, the 19th of September. Good to have you aboard. We are part of the Believe Podcast Network and presented by our title sponsor, Anna Jar and Levine Accident Attorneys, 800-747-FREE, 800-747-3733. If you've been involved in any kind of an accident, the first call you make is 911. The second call you make is Anna Jar and Levine, where they're going to treat you like family, just like they did me at the launch of Zaslow Show 2.0. They're going to get you the money that you deserve. Anna Jar and Levine, accident attorneys, 800-747-FREE, 800-747-3733. Got a fun show planned today. It is Tuesday, so that means the previous NFL week is done. We are through two weeks. We get to start looking forward now to week three. The Dolphins this weekend, home opener, Denver Broncos. That team sucks, man. Denver Broncos this weekend, a Bronco team that just gave up 35 points to the Washington Commanders. The Broncos come in 0-2 this weekend. They lost in week number one as well to, by one point to the Vegas Raiders. And the Dolphins, you really couldn't ask for a better start. 2-0, 2-0 on the road and they come home in what is going to be a raucous atmosphere, a terrific crowd at Hard Rock Stadium. I also want to say I'm proud to announce we have another sponsor jumped on board here. How about everybody welcome Bet Online? That's right, Bet Online aboard Zaslow Show 2.0. We love it. Football's back, and Bet Online is your number one information source. For all your sports wagering info with all the up-to-minute stats, news, scores, matchup breakdowns, get the latest game odds, spreads, and totals from the NFL and college football. They're at your fingertips with BetOnline's real-time updates and statistics, news, and odds from the start of the season all the way to the college football playoff and through the Super Bowl. BetOnline gives you access to the best football promotions and contests available anywhere online. Head to the website today, or you can use your mobile device to get in on the action. Remember, use promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, BELIEVE, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. Glad to have them on board the show here. And like I said, we got a great show planned today. It's Tuesday. So what does that mean? Well, we got Twitter Jam coming up every Tuesday. You know we got Twitter Jam. Also, every Tuesday during NFL season, we got to do our Zaslow Show 2.0 Power Rankings. So we got an updated top five NFL Power Rankings through two weeks heading into week three. But the big story, <coughs> excuse me, the big story. Oh, and by the way, there could be some Damian Lillard action going on there. We're going to get to that. We got some stuff for you. But... The big story is Monday Night Football last night, and specifically Nick Chubb and his injury. So, as far as Monday Night Football goes, Week 2 wraps up last night. I love the Monday Night Football doubleheader. I think they're doing it again next week. And I also love the Monday Night Football doubleheader where they stagger the start times. Meaning, it's not the first game's at 7, the next game's at 10. No. 7-15, 8-15. Look, I'm a big boy. I could choose to watch what I want to watch. But having the second game start at 10 p.m. like they used to do on the opening Monday Night Football broadcast of the season, it's way too late. I don't want to stay up until 1 a.m. watching the NFL. So 7-15, 8-15, I'm a big boy. I could pick which game I want to watch. And you know in the Zaslow Mansion family room, we got big TV, small TV action. So I got both games going on. And here's also the thing. Because they stagger the time, okay, you're going to be able to watch the end of both games. The first game's going to end an hour earlier, and there you go. So, I love them doing it that way. Now, the first game, Saints and Panthers, whew, that game was rough. So, the Saints win 20-17. to It really wasn't even that close. It was 20-9 to in the fourth quarter. <coughs> Panthers get a late touchdown. They don't recover the onside kick. Uh, Derek Carr, I think, has been pretty disappointing so far through these two weeks. But the Saints, they get the win. 
They're uh, uh, 20 to 17. And did the Saints win in week number one? Yeah, the Saints beat the Titans, right? Are the Saints 2 0? Oh? I mean, I should know it off the top. Well, if they beat the Titans last week, they would be 2 0. Oh. I just don't remember if they beat the Titans. Yeah, they did beat the Titans last week, 16 15. So Saints are 2 0 oh now. Panthers, they lose yesterday. Bryce Young, so 20 to 17. That game was a tough watch. Well, luckily, you got another game. You got Steelers and Browns. But here's the thing. So you got Saints and Panthers going on. The game kind of sucks. And through the first half of Steelers-Browns, like, this game kind of sucks too. The, the two games there yesterday were rough games. Especially the entire first game and through the first half of Steelers-Browns. Matter of fact, by the time I came, uh, was I upstairs? Yeah. By the time I came upstairs to watch the game, there was like five minutes left in the second quarter. Saints, Saints Panthers like was about to end. There's five minutes left in Steelers Browns. And I see it says second quarter, five minutes. I'm like, this game's in the second quarter? I've been watching this game all night. How is this game only in the middle of the second quarter? The games felt long last night. They were not good games. But anyway, the Steelers, they get a couple defensive scores. They win 26 22. Deshaun Watson sucks. Uh, it, it's only two games this year. Okay, uh, yeah, all right. But we also have a sample size from the last, I think, six games last year, five or six games last year. And you also know he hasn't played good football since 2020. He kind of sucks. And the steel... Uh, you, want, you want to know who else sucks? Uh, Kenny Pickett. Very rough start to the year. I thought the Steelers were going to be good. Maybe they will be good. I trust Mike Tomlin for sure. But I thought Kenny Pickett was going to come out this year slinging it. And he has not been good. Now look, second year quarterback. Young quarterback. Okay. Like I I, I expect him to get better because I, I thought he was going to be really good. But I thought he was going to look good through these first two games. And he has not. Steelers though, who I think have won 20 consecutive Monday Night Football home games. That's wild. And a defensive score in the fourth quarter winds up winning it for them, 26-22. So the Steelers, they bounce back from a terrible loss at home last week to San Francisco. They're 1-1. One and, one. and the Browns now, <laughs> an opportunity to go 2-0. and oh. They are now 1-1. One and, one. and they have a major issue, not just at quarterback, because I'm not sure we're ever going to see Deshaun Watson get back to form, but Nick Chubb last night with a brutal leg injury. So... I know it was a lot of praise for ESPN not showing the replay. Uh, uh, yeah, like, all right, whatever. You could also take the tactic, we're going to show you the replay, but if you're squeamish, you don't want to look. i probably lean toward the let's not show the replay. Uh, I, I, I never like seeing it. I happened to miss it. Like, I, like I, went up to the, I went up to the fridge. I, I don't know. I went to get something to eat. And my son told, actually, no, no. I was in the shower. And when I came down from the shower, my son said, Nick Chubb, terrible injury. He goes, here, look. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want to look. I, I, I don't have, I don't want to see it. If you're telling me it's catastrophic, I hate seeing it. He was, he, he had to show me. So I watch it and I'm like, yeah, all right, I don't need to see it again. I, I don't like watching those injuries. So I guess I'm good with the SPN not showing it. But at the same time, I'm cool at making my own decision whether or not I want to watch it. But Nick Chubb suffers, suffers a brutal leg injury, and he's obviously done for the season. I mean, it looked like like it was the knee was hyperextended, totally the uh, like really ugly. It's it's making me squirm just thinking about it, just talking about it. I don't know what the official diagnosis is right now. I mean, it could be a broken leg, or uh, it's most likely a, a torn ACL, MCL, everything in the knee. It was really ugly, and. You know, you could you could make the argument, this is why the running backs, this is why running backs want the money. Because their careers are short because the beating they take, and they're also very susceptible to serious injuries. This is why running backs want the money. And then you could also make the case, this is why the teams don't want to pay them. Because you are very susceptible to injury, and your careers are very short. Like, it works both ways. The running backs... See all of those facts that I just, or, or that statement that I just said, say, 
that's why we want the money. And the teams see those statements that I just made and say, that's why we're not giving you the money. And the teams are obviously going to win out in that battle. But that right there is an example of why the running back wants the money. Now, the second part of what... I, and I felt bad for... I, I, I feel bad for Nick Chubb because everything I've seen about Nick Chubb, everything I've read about Nick Chubb, heard, heard from Nick Chubb, really seems... <coughs> excuse me. Really seems like one of the good dudes in the NFL. Seems like a good guy in the NFL. And for that injury to happen to him really sucks. He's an elite running back. He's a top three running back probably in the NFL. So that's really shitty from that part. The other part of it is how the injury happened. So as Nick Chubb is being tackled high and being taken to the ground, <coughs> Minka Fitzpatrick, low character Minka, everybody knows he's, he's low character, he was on a Dolphin team that wasn't going to be very good. And he obviously, it's, it's, it's his birthright to play for a team that's going to be good every single year. And he forced his way out of Miami. Low character Minka. But is he also dirty player Minka? So that's the big story from last night, right? For me, that's a dirty hit by Minka Fitzpatrick. Chubb is being taken down up high and... Minka Fitzpatrick comes in and spears him right into his knees. Now, there's one part where, and we saw this with the Dolphin game the other day, where Jalen Waddle, who's now in concussion protocol, where he took a targeting hit right to the head. These players, especially the safeties, these players aren't taught to tackle anymore. They don't tackle, they hit. They're not trying to tackle. They're trying to hit. And, and I know like rugby, for instance, rugby has certain rules where if you tackle below the waist, that's like you're not allowed to tackle below the waist. In the NFL, I wish they would have some type of rule, and I don't know if it would stop it, but I wish they had some type of rule where you have to actually try and make a tackle. These guys, these kids are not taught how to tackle anymore. They don't wrap guys up anymore. They're going out there trying to hit. And that's why they launch themselves. Because they're not trying to tackle. They're trying to hit. And that's what we saw there last night with Minka Fitzpatrick. That's not a tackle. That's trying to hit. And trying to hit him below the waist. And specifically trying to hit him in the legs. So that he could tackle him. So that he can hit him to the ground. To me... That was a very dirty hit by Minka Fitzpatrick. And I know the Steelers fan is going to say it's not, and the Browns fan is going to say it is, and I don't have any bias in this spot, except that NFL players now don't know how to tackle anymore. All they do is try and hit. And Minka Fitzpatrick committing a very dirty hit yesterday, and it's why these players, you know, they try to get concussions out of the game over the last however many years. And they, they've outlawed the head-to-head -head and the hits to the head. And you ask any NFL player, would you rather get hit in the head? The player try to tackle you high and maybe you get hit in the head? Or would you rather, okay, we're not allowed to hit players in the head anymore. It's a penalty, so let's make sure we go low. And then you get hit in the knees. Every single NFL player tells you he would much rather get hit in the head than get hit in the knees. He would much rather a potential concussion than having his knee blown out. A potential concussion, you can keep playing theoretically. You get hit in the knee, it could end your career. Now, it's not going to end Nick Chubb's career, but it could end your career in the sense of you'll never be the same again. You may never be able to run that way again. It'll end your season for sure. Every player will tell you, I'd much rather get hit high than get hit low. But the NFL has tried to outlaw that, and understandably so. And they'd be able to avoid the significant knee injuries like last night as well if these guys would actually tackle instead of just try and hit, which is what Minka Fitzpatrick did last night. Now, it's a dirty hit in my book a thousand out of a thousand times. Does that make Minka Fitzpatrick a dirty player? No. You can make a dirty hit. You can commit a dirty play and not be a dirty player. I'm not an asshole, but 
I could definitely behave like an asshole sometimes. I could do things that an asshole would do. I totally do. But I'm not an asshole. It doesn't make me an asshole. Makeup Fitzpatrick did something dirty last night. Does that make him a dirty player? I don't know. It's for other people to decide, I suppose. But that hit was absolutely a dirty hit. There's, there's no convincing me otherwise on that hit. Now, like I said, it doesn't make him a dirty player, but it is a dirty hit. Now, I don't want to hear, and this could be a major conversation today. I don't want to hear about how, okay, Minka Fitzpatrick has to go low on Nick Chubb in order to take him down. Because Nick Chubb is so big and so strong. And Minka Fitzpatrick is not as strong. So he has to go low like that in order to take him down. I don't want to hear it. If a guy is difficult to tackle, the answer cannot be, I have to attempt a dirty tackle in order to get him down. You're hard to tackle, so I'm going to dive at your knees. No, that's unacceptable. If the player's hard to tackle, try harder to tackle him. If the player's hard to tackle, the answer can't be, I'm going to dive helmet first into your knee because that's the only way I can tackle you. That's unacceptable. So I don't want to hear about Nick Chubb is really hard to tackle and the only way Minka Fitzpatrick was going to be able to get him down is by diving headfirst at the knee. That's a dirty play. If he's hard to tackle, the answer cannot be, I'm going to take your knee out and have you miss the rest of the season. I'm sorry. It's not acceptable. It's a dirty hit. And that's going to be the major conversation today. And that's fine. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a very sports radio talking point. But that, uh, that's a disaster of a play that is avoided if you just try and tackle him. Wrap up his legs. Instead, make a Fitzpatrick dove like a torpedo into his knees. Tackle him by the waist. Hey, it's really hard to get down. Yeah. Yeah, he is. That's why he's great. It doesn't mean that the alternative is take out his knees. Because that's what you're telling me when you say Nick Chubb is really hard to bring down. Safeties are smaller than him. The only way to tackle him then, you're telling me, is to take out his knee. It's not acceptable. It's not acceptable. So, it sucks. It sucks that that's the main story from last night. And of course, that brings us to today's edition of Twitter Jam. All right, so today's edition of Twitter Jam is on the big story from last night, which is the Nick Chubb injury, all right? Get some reaction about that. And, you know, Minko, is it dirty? All of that stuff. So that's today's Twitter Jam. We will start out here. We will start with the live call from Monday Night Football. This tweet is actually from Awful Announcing. And the tweet says, Joe Buck, quote, I am told that the replay of Nick Chubb getting injured is not to be seen. And then it goes on to say, The groan from the Pittsburgh crowd probably tells us all we need to know. Chubb was carted off. Minka Fitzpatrick was also hurt on the play, but was later seen on Pittsburgh's bench. Here is the call. Good things here in this game. Here's Chubb trying to pick his way inside the five, and he does. Knocked down at the three. Ball came out, but he was down. Minka Fitzpatrick gets the tackle, but a gain of five. And the last thing any Browns fan wants to see, Nick Chubb holding his left leg. Oh, boy. And Minka Fitzpatrick is down for the Steelers. I am told that the replay of Nick Chubb getting injured is not to be seen. Yeah, it's we're not going to show it. It's uh, it's it's as bad as you can imagine. They just showed it on the big screen here in Pittsburgh, and the crowd gasped. Yeah, so uh, you, you hear you hear the groan from the crowd. Uh, 
yeah, like the tweet said, that that's all you need to know. If you didn't, you know, if you never watch the replay, you hear the groan from the crowd. Absolutely terrible. I think it's a very dirty hit by Minka Fitzpatrick. Next tweet here. This is from Ian Rappaport at Rap Sheet, NFL Network, great reporter. He tweets out last night during the game, Browns running back Nick Chubb suffered what is believed to be a significant and season-ending knee injury against the Steelers, including multiple torn ligaments. He'll have tests done, but unfortunately, essentially what it looked like. Yeah, everybody knows that. All right, this tweet here is from Scott Hansen, the, uh, the Red Zone. All right, he, he's the host of that. He's, he's not the Red Zone. He's the host of the Red Zone. And Scott Hansen says, it's so bad, you hope it's only season-ending. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of those. This tweet is from Jordan Schultz. He is an NFL insider, and he first tweeted out, Browns fear Nick Chubb's season is over from a possible knee dislocation, potentially with multiple ligament damage. He's currently undergoing testing. There's serious concern. And then he quote tweeted his own tweet with head coach Kevin Stefanski told reporters he expects Nick Chubb to miss the remainder of the season with a significant knee injury. Christian McCaffrey, running back for the 49ers, he tweets out, prayers up for Chubb. Baker Mayfield, who of course played with him when he was the quarterback in Cleveland, love you, Nick, prayers up. LeBron James, he tweets out, damn, man, Nick Chubb, praying for the absolute best. <coughs> yep, all right. Uh, Good morning football, you know I love that program. Good morning football tweets out, was, and this from this morning, was the Minka Fitzpatrick hit that took Nick Chubb out dirty? Jason McCourty explains why he went low. All right, so here you go. This is what I was talking about. Here's Jason McCourty on Good Morning Football this morning. The hit, mm. okay? I, I'm, I'm texting with some people who played in the league who said the Minka hit uh, is dirty. He should be fine. He should be suspended. There's no business for that. He went low and he was vulnerable. Jason, DB for over a decade in the league, what did you think of the Micah hit that ended Chubb's night? I don't think it was intentionally dirty. I think when you look at the replay and you see him going low while somebody's tackling him up high, you're like, well, why would he do that? And I think from a safety's position, you have to remember, DBs are the smallest guys out there on the field a lot of times. So the way you get a big back down is you have to go low. If you're Micah Fitzpatrick, you can't tackle a Nick Chubb up high because he's going to run right through you. When you so angry ones, you're seeing guys stiff arm and all those types of things, and that split second, in his mind, he's like, all right, he's coming through this hole. I have to go and I have to take him low. If he had to redo it again, knowing that somebody had him up high, maybe he doesn't. But it's easy for us to watch that in slow motion and say, oh, well, he should have went up top. He had already made that decision, going full speed up to make a collision. You hate to see it, but I don't think there was anything dirty or intentional in that play where he's trying to injure Nick Chubb. What did you think? I, I think it's it's easy to sit here and say it, that he went after his knee. Why, you think he wanted to go after Nick Chubb's knee? I don't right. believe it for a second. I know people are saying Steelers are dirty, Fitzpatrick is dirty. It happens very quickly. I'm sure Fitzpatrick would like to have the play back. I, I love Minka. I love mm -hmm. him as a player. I can't sit here and say, what are you doing? Like nah. He's been in the league a long time. He's a professional. Yeah, I just, I, I don't agree. I obviously understand what he's saying, and I don't agree. Nick Chubb being hard to tackle does not mean the only way you can tackle him is by torpedoing yourself into his knees it's not an excuse a player being difficult to tackle is not an excuse for taking out their knees i i don't buy it it's a dirty hit to me every single now like kyle brandt is saying there do i believe that minka fitzpatrick was intentionally going for his knees no not no i don't think he was intentionally trying to hurt him no but he was intentionally going low for the reasons that jason mccordy is pointing out there and it's not acceptable. I don't think he wants him to be hurt. I mean, that's just my... Now, look, we know he's low-character Minka. I don't believe he wants him to get hurt. I don't believe that at all. But he doesn't have to be a dirty player in order to make a dirty play. And that's a dirty play. And finally, here is Mike Lombardi. Mike Lombardi, former NFL exec. He, then, he tweets out last night, Chris Ballard, it's Colts GM, Chris Ballard's phone might ring tonight... Browns have gone all in on their season. If they lose Chubb, they might pay handsomely for Taylor. If they lose Chubb, they've lost Chubb. They might pay handsomely for Taylor. And that right there is this week's edition of Twitter Jam. So, let's talk about that. Yes, he's right. The Browns have lost Chubb now. 
And I've been telling you, I think the Dolphins are going to trade for Jonathan Taylor. I think the Dolphins are going to go after Jonathan Taylor within the next two weeks when he then becomes eligible to come off of PUP. They clearly were interested in, bef in him before. I believe they're okay with paying him the money because of the rookie contract that Tua is still under. The Dolphins are in a win-now window. They just couldn't come up with the compensation for the Colts. I do believe the Dolphins are going to revisit that conversation. And I have felt, I've been going on radio stations, TV shows the last few weeks, and I've been saying, I think the Dolphins are going to trade for Jonathan Taylor. Now, the Browns have to enter that conversation. Like the kids say, the Browns have entered the chat. So the Browns now, and here's why. Like Mike Lombardi is pointing out there, I can see the Browns trading for Jonathan Taylor now. This is an organization, the Cleveland Browns, that has a history of making terrible deals. You look right at Deshaun Watson, a terrible deal. And the reason that that is important to point out here is, okay, not only will they be willing to give Taylor the money, but they may also be willing to give the Colts the compensation that they're asking for, even if it's considered to be a terrible deal, because the Browns have made terrible deals. The only way to get Deshaun Watson to play for them was to make a terrible deal. They went out there and did it. So the only way to get Jonathan Taylor is to make a terrible deal with the Colts. If that's what it takes to get the guy they want, I believe the Browns and their history would show you they are willing to do that. I could see them going all in on Taylor now. The Dolphins are not going to go all in on Taylor. The Dolphins want Taylor at the price that they're willing to get him at. I felt and still feel they will revisit that conversation. The Browns, though, will be willing to match whatever the Colts are asking for. I believe the Browns will be willing to go all in. I don't believe the Dolphins will be willing to go all in. Now, does it play a factor with the Dolphins that Raheem Mostert has been so great the first couple weeks that the Dolphins' offensive line has blocked so well for him these first couple weeks? Yeah, I think that probably does play a role. I think that probably makes it even less likely that the Dolphins meet the Colts' asking price. So you got that right there. Dolphins' O-line has been great for Raheem Mostert. That lessens the chance of the Dolphins meeting the Colts' asking price. And now if you get a desperate team like the Colts, who are willing to meet that asking price, it makes the chances of the Dolphins getting Jonathan Taylor even less likely at this point. I have felt they were going to get him, but most in the offensive line's production the first couple weeks, combined with a desperate Browns team now, I'm not so sure it's likely that the Dolphins are going to land Jonathan Taylor anymore. And we got we to be honest about that, right? So, and, and on top of it, the Browns, considering how bad Deshaun Watson has been, and the money that you've committed to him. You definitely have to make an effort toward Jonathan Taylor. And what I mean by that is, it, the only way it becomes palpable, the money that you've paid Deshaun Watson, with him being this poor, is to do everything you can to still make sure you win. Because if the Browns put themselves in a position to win, like if the Browns were to win the Super Bowl, I, it's, it, I know we're living in fantasy land now, but if the Browns were to win the Super Bowl and Deshaun Watson is terrible, no one's going to complain about the money. You got Jonathan Taylor, you got a great defense, you got other weapons. As long as you win, who cares what you're paying the quarterback? So yeah, I, I, I think the fact that they pay Watson so much money and he's been poor makes it even more likely that they're going to go out and make a big-time effort for Jonathan Taylor. And you know what? Like I said, the Colts are happy with Nick Chubb getting hurt, but this is why the Colts held on to him. What if there is a team that thinks that they're a contender, and the Browns likely think they're a contender. They're wrong, but the Browns think they're a contender, and what if they lose their running back? Here we are, sitting with Jonathan Taylor, and just two weeks away from, we can trade him right now, but two weeks away from being eligible to come off of PUP. So, I could totally see the Browns going all in on him now. I could totally see that.